I feel like I'm like eight <laughs> in someone else's house. These are giant chairs. So hi, you look great. Um, you do look beautiful. Thank I feel you. like a slob. Thank so no, 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 no. <laughs> um, I know Amy because of Ted, and I haven't mentioned. Um, I haven't mentioned Ted yet, but Ted, Ted is kind of the reason I wrote this book because I gave a Ted talk about that started off the themes in the book, and then voila, the book happened, and Amy is actually <clears throat> experiencing an identical fate right now because she did a TED talk two years ago, three years ago, two years ago, and um, my TED talk has had a mere six million views. Her, hers has had 20 million. And, uh, and therefore, her book needs to be about four times as good. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> How are you doing? Has anyone seen Amy's talk? Just curious. If you want to check it out later, you just Google, uh, Google it. It's, it's an you should tell them, and you can probably do the elevator pitch for your talk better than oh, I can. Oh, wow. Okay, so I, uh, I, I study body language, uh, but not in the way that people typically think about it which is a conversation between two people. I mean, you hear language and you think communication and there's another person involved. But the, the, the thing is that our body language really shapes how we see ourselves, how we feel. It even shapes our physiology. So I started watching, I was sort of watching these students in class. I, I, teach, uh, I teach at Harvard and at the business school. And uh, the women struggle, you know, they're amazing. They get in, they're amazing. And then they struggle because participation is half their grade. And I'm watching them and I see this totally different body language. I see the guys coming into class and they're all, here, here. sorry, I'm gonna have to do this. All right. They're, all, they're, they're kind of, you know, there's, there's a pit in, in the classroom and they're already like talking like this to each other about what they did last night. And, and they're already possessing the room before the class has even begun, right? So, so they've, they're already showing power. And the funny thing is that they look just like the great apes <laughs> who are the alphas when they're showing power. They do the same things. They pound their chest, they make themselves big, they expand, they take up space. And I'm thinking, this is weird because I see the quiet people, the introverts, they're going into class, they sit down. And by the way, at HBS, everyone is on time for every class. The only late person is me, which is absolutely scandalizing to people. So, so you get there and the, the guys are already doing this, you know, chest pounding stuff. And the people who actually are really good writers and do well on the tests are, you know, they're, they're looking at their phones and they're looking at the, the things that they were supposed to read and they're making themselves tiny. They're doing what I call pretzel legs like this. And then the women do this, what I call this the apologetic hand raise, where they like cradle their elbow with their hand. And, and I'm thinking, this is the problem, that the women are not participating because they're scared. And what if I could just get them to fake it? Just like act like the alphas, the apes, and before they go into the classroom, and would it make a difference? And it turned out we've done many, many, many experiments. I'm totally a nerdy experimentalist. And, and some of my nerdy experimentalist friends are in the audience. Can you just yell? Thank you, nerds. I love the nerds. That's the great thing about Boston, music and nerds. So, and Amanda Palmer. Uh, swoon. Uh, which I will have to tell the story briefly of, of, of how you learned that I was a fan after we became friends because we were sort of singing casually together at a place in, at night. And she forgot the lyrics to her song. And then I was like, ah, oh, that's the wrong verse or lyrics or something like that. She's like, wait a minute, did you? I'm like, oh man, I, like, know, the, I know your stuff inside and out. Anyway, so, uh, that's, so I, I, that's what we did. So we, we manipulated this. We bring, bring people to the lab for 30 seconds to two minutes. We have them stand in like the starfish pose or Wonder Woman or like this and it increases their testosterone by 15 to 25% to stand in the high power pose. And that's associated with assertiveness and your, a desire to compete and confidence and happiness. And it decreases their cortisol 
by about the same percentage. So it makes them much less stressed out. So before you go into a stressful thing, like a job interview or an audition or, holy crap, singing one of your favorite Amanda Palmer songs on stage, which I'm going to do, it, it, and I am <laughs> with my 12-year-old son, who is not nervous. Yeah. All right, so Amanda's going to demonstrate some of the power poses. So this is what we call the Wonder Woman. Uh, can you do the starfish? That's the starfish. So there are some others that involve like putting your feet up on your desk and your hands behind your head like this. Um, and, and so anyway, doing this before you go in. There you go. Put your hands behind your head though, like this. Right. Right. Here, we'll both do it. Because I, I feel like I can do, do stuff like this when I'm not at Harvard. Here we go. Like this. It's more like this. But, all right. Legs are carefully coming down. Uh, that's what we find. And it, so it, it makes people happier. It's, it's being used to, cle to, to treat clinical depression. Um, it's being used to intervene in bullying situations, to treat kids who are being bullied, to help them to feel more confident. But in the end, what we find is that it makes people more present. So it makes them feel in touch with what they believe, in touch with who they are. They love themselves more. And when you love yourself and you feel like you believe in yourself, that's what comes across. And that's presence. That's enthusiasm and confidence and commitment and love and authenticity. So I thought about it as faking it in the beginning. It's not faking it at all. These people are becoming the selves that they want to be. So that's what I've been studying and I continue to study. Amy is amazing. Um, so yeah, go look at her TED talk, it's incredible. And she and I are both um, now like in the, um, the, the inner, the, the, the weird people who go back to TED uh, cult, TED, cult of TED. We don't fit in. <laughs> I, we're, the, I, we're the art chicks. <laughs> Really, I, even I am, right? You know. So. Um, so Amy, Amy went through the Ask Amanda questions, and we, we only have time for I think like two. So pick. Shit. Choose okay. wisely. Okay, 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 okay. Young Vader. All right. Well, in 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 in, you know, keeping keeping in 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 the theme of the the the, the evening, which is the launch of Amanda's amazing book. I mean, and I've read a lot of books. Read the book, it's amazing and it's life-changing. I'm gonna ask you this, what is the best question you've ever been asked? Mine's a meta question. Huh. I mean, it's all context. Usually, I do, uh, I'll often just throw out to Twitter or Facebook or my blog or whatever, just and ask me anything. And usually, and I look at my own reaction to the questions and I find it fascinating to like actually um, sort of analyze why I choose to answer what I answer. Usually the best question is, how are you? It's not very interesting, but it actually is the, the best question. That's what ama makes Amanda who she is, you know? <laughs> exactly. Serious, that, that is exactly it. Because when you hear that question, you actually hear it because she's present in her interactions, which I don't even understand how she does with a gazillion people, but she does. Lies, it's all lies. <laughs> it's not. All right, can I ask you one more? Yeah, go for it. That was an easy one. Um, there's a really hard one and a kind of lighter one. You sadistic fucks. <laughs> all right. Okay. Go for it. Um, this kind of leads into the song we're about to sing. Perfect. What do you regret asking for? Oh. <laughs> well, I feel like my answer is kind of a pussy answer, but I, um, if I have a, a, a personal religion or if I, if I had to subscribe to some kind of belief system, it has been to just like, you know, self-doubt and the fraud police and the things we talk to, I talk about in 
stuff. I, um, I fucking hate regret. I think it's the worst thing in the world. <laughs> um, and I've, and like the older I get and I sort of look back at the things that I constantly replay in my head, the one, do you, everyone has those, like that, my life is fine, but every time you think about that one thing and what I could have done differently here and if only I had, and maybe things would be different if, um, and those things can drive you crazy. And if I've learned, and I've learned a lot of things, but one of the biggest things I've taken away from, you know, my practice in this world and my yoga practice and meditation practice and talking with people like tearing apart, you know, the, the curtains of life, it's that it's such a fucking waste of time. Still shit that I find myself wanting to regret, but when I go wanting to do it, like if only I hadn't gone to this college, if only this, if only that, I just, I've gotten to this place where I just try to cut myself off at the pass and just go, no, 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 no. You did that, but now you're here. And even if you're having a shitty fucking day, it doesn't matter, you might have been dead. So you're, look, a knee, you're awesome. And like, you're fine, you're alive. Um, just sh shut the fuck up. So yeah, my, uh, I, think, um, I think nothing. I think my honest, deep, true answer is that I don't regret a fucking thing. May the I? end. May now we're going to make Amy Cuddy sing. <laughs>